matrices, what was the challenge? What specific part didn't you understand in matrices? In matrices, do you recall anything in matrices that gave you a hard time? Okay, let me let me give you let me give you this question. Uh, this is just general exercise. It's going to it involve so many of them, but you can first look at this. Given that you copy the question. Eh? Let us work out that question. Given that A is that matrix, B is that matrix, find the inverse of 2A minus a third B. You work it out then, because it has A and B. Just question A and B. What was your answer, Sarah? Businje, what was your answer? Oh, you said you had done the work. <laughs> you are not telling me the answers. Isabel, what's your answer? Yes, my, it's okay. We are going to revise it. That is part A. I want to see those ones who have tried. A 10. You got 10, eh? A 10, a 10, negative a 15, 4 out of 15. Okay. Okay, that's one answer. Then, uh, Businje, Businje, what answer have you got? I stopped on that, on that part before you get the inverse. I'm forgetting how to find inverse. Hey, but you got you first got the matrix, the, the, the two A minus a third. Yeah, I just worked it out. Okay. Okay. Uh me, let, let me check with Migisa. Migisa have not told us what you've got because you cannot see the board. Migisa, let me get this piece of work. Uh, we, can somebody display the answers how she has gotten the answer? The answers. Matrix A was
What did you get here? Negative two, negative one, zero, and one. You have something like that? Yes. Does everybody understand how we are getting yes. this? We are getting this by multiplying. For example, like I can show you one of them. This upper times negative six is the same as negative six divided by a third is negative two. That's what we are getting. We are multiplying this factor by each of the entries inside. It's the same as dividing. For example, three divided by three is one. Negative three divided by three is negative one. That's what we have done eh? for that part. Then when you subtract, what do you get? When you subtract, you end up with six minus minus two, eight. Negative four minus negative four minus minus one. Uh-huh. This is a plus. Negative four plus one is negative three. Then the lower part, two minus zero is two, four minus one is three. Did you first get that matrix? That is, yes. not, that is not the final answer, remember. Eh? It's just the matrix. Even my, my who only got that. Do you have that my? Okay, now let us go ahead and find the inverse. Uh, for the inverse, we I'll first move this part. Okay, did you copy these questions? I want I'm gonna use this side. Oh, yeah, then copy them. Let me let me just move this. So the inverse, inverse of eight to negative three, three. Who remembers how to find inverse? Who can remind us on how they find inverse of a matrix? What are the steps? First get the adjoint. Yes. What, what did you first say? Get, first get the adjoint. The adjoint. So what with the adjoint of this matrix? The adjoint is uh -huh. what with the adjoint? Eight negative three. No. At what changes? These ones change. Three and eight negative two and three. These ones change position. Eh? These ones and this. The nine there are gonna change. Then these ones change side. Do you agree? The other ones in the major diagonal have changed position. Position means the one that was here goes up. This goes down, but don't change their signs. If it was a positive, leave it positive. If it was negative, leave it negative. Then this one change. Oh, yes, Mr. Namdala was flying in. It's flying. That's the plane that you have had for sound. These ones change, they change uh, signs. The one that was negative turns out to be positive. The one that was positive turns out to be negative, but do not change their positions. Don't shift them from their initial positions. So we have two changes. The major diagonal changes positions. This is the major diagonal, and this is the minor. The minor changes signs. 
Okay, after getting the adjoint, what do we do next? This is not the final answer for inverse. So step number one, we have got, we have got adjoint. What is the next step? I mean, this has total now gone off. What is the next step after getting adjoint? Who can try? Uh, how do you get that? What's the next step after knowing the adjoint? Should we assume that this adjoint is the answer for inverse? Should we take this as the final answer? We had to first get that determinant. Oh, very good. That's good. We are going to first find the determinant. So determinant is partial determinant of the matrix. We would have labeled this matrix like letter A, B, but we didn't label. Uh -huh. So how do you get the determinant of that matrix? Make it major diagonal minus minor diagonal. Yes, major diagonal minus minor diagonal. So we shall multiply the major diagonal minus the minor. We use the other original matrix, don't use the adjoint matrix. So the answers will be the same, but we go back and use this. Uh huh. What are the answers? This is 24 minus minus 6, which is 24 plus 6, and the answer is. So we have the answer as 30. We also have the adjoint. So finally, how do you get the inverse at this stage? One out of the adjoint, sorry, out of the determinant into the adjoint. Okay, good. One out of the determinant and come with some pieces. So inverse is one out of determinant times that so shall say one out of thirty into the Negative two, eight. One out of thirty into the adjoint, which can be simplified as this is three out of three out of thirty, three out of thirty, negative two out of thirty. Eight out of thirty. We can simplify it like that. Again, we can further simplify this. If you further simplify this, what do you think we shall get? Did you get that answer? People who are saying that had finished the question. Did you have that answer in your work? Yes, teacher. No. So, Sarah, what was the problem? If you check out your solution and what we have done, the working, where did you go wrong? I got it like that. 
It's Martina who didn't get. Martina, why did you get wrong? I stopped to look at the equation. I, I didn't find the inverse. Hey, but now, have you known how they find inverse? Have you seen the whole thing? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Charity, where did you stop? I finished. You got it, eh? Isabel, did you get the actual answer that, the, that you have got? Yeah. Hmm? Isabel, you have not replied. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tobias refused. My, now, Maya, have you seen what you do? Yes, teacher. Thank you. You have understood that part, eh? Yes. Okay, it's one part. It's Tobias who has not replied. Megisa has not. Uh, she's on, but her video and we need to hope Megisa. Her video and, and audio are both off. I don't know how we can hope her out. Okay, now we got the next question. The next, uh, Chloe. Chloe, your microphone is off, but there is some work we are doing on the board. Uh, what you do now, we got the next number, part B. Part B has has a, a question there. Solve the simultaneous equation. That is part B. So you work out. Did you get answer for part B? Work out part B. Let us give ourselves like two minutes to get that answer for part B. That's good, and then we work it out together. So now let us work it out. Let us work out this one. Let me first answer some code here. Hello. Good morning, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes. Okay, now, what, what method? They told us to use matrix method. How did you work out using matrix method? What would be the first step? What is the first step for this number? The first step would be, the easiest step is to first remove this decimal point. How do you remove the decimal point from such a question? This one. That's your fraction. Yeah, you make it as a fraction. So this would be two out of ten. Why? Yes. Let us first simplify this number, eh? this equation. Then we shall go back and put it together with the three y. So when I put it like this, uh huh. What can I do next if I want to remove that ten, the ten that you see down? If I want to remove by two of both the numerator and denominator. Okay. You multiply, you multiply by 10 everywhere. Each part of the question, each part of the equation is multiplied by 10. So this will be 2y because the 10 will be here and this 10 will cancel. This will be 30 y, 30x and this will be negative 40. So you end up with something like this. Times 10, times 10, times 10. When you multiply 10 everywhere, that equation is going to simplify to this. When it simplifies to this, then that is the equation that you are going to use with the other one, the first one, and the matrix will be, by the way, you have to be careful with the matrix. I can have negative three, two, this is two, 30. That is the matrix. And here I put y and x. Then here I put 13 and negative 40. That's how the matrix is going to simplify. I, I hope you are seeing what I'm saying. The matrix is negative three, the first line, 
the entire line here, negative three and two are from the first equation and this 13. Then these ones are from the simplified equation, this one here. So 2y, 230x, but to make you remember, some people forget and write x, y, because we are used to x and y. If you want to start with x, then you must have rearranged your, your equations starting with the x variables. But if you don't change from x variables, if you don't change the equation, eh, then you be so much careful where you have y and x. And I think some of your answers you must have interchanged. You are going to work it out and see. But when I said somebody should show us what she, she has done, or has done, you didn't show me. I have a feeling you have not done them. <clears throat> okay. So from that step, what did you do next? From this step here, what do we do next? From this. We find the adjoint and multiply it on both sides. So the adjoint would be, first of all, the adjoint of this is 30, negative three, negative two. You have something like that as the adjoint, eh? Then multiply it on both sides. You bring back the original matrix. This original matrix, you bring it back. Okay, you copy the way it is here. And then you put here. Now you write the adjoint first. So you will write that equation, eh? but you make it the adjoint first, adjoint comes first, then the equation, then adjoint first, the equation. I hide us now multiply. Those who have multiplied, what was your first entry here? What figure did you have? Those who have multiplied. Hey, you didn't multiply. 30 times was negative three. You say row by column. Row by column. Eh? Row by column. So this is 30. 30 times was negative three. Then negative two times was two. This, one, this goes with this and this goes with this. Like you move like this and this. You are following that. Eh? Negative 90. Plus negative four, negative ninety four. Did you get negative ninety four anywhere? Some people have not tried, and they are telling me answers which are confirmed. Negative ninety four. What was the answer here? Let us first finish this line. Yeah. Thirty. This thirty there was two. Plus negative two times that. This is sixty minus. So this is zero. Are people following what I'm doing? I don't know what to just do, and you are not following. This is revision. During revision, you ask where you don't understand. It's not like the class where people just rush through. Are we following? Are we together? Tobias, are we together? Yes, sir. So the next number down here, we are going to multiply again. This and was this. When you notice it will be, this is negative, it will also be zero. Then the next and the last one, negative two times two, then negative three times that. I've got this times this, first and first, the second and the second down eh? Here you go by a row, there you go by a column. So this is negative four plus negative 90, also negative 94. You will notice that in these numbers, 
the number here is always the same as the other one. Some people use the other method of the determinant. The first rate of the determinant, determinant will be negative 94. Well, you can first work it out like this. Let us multiply this side. This side we have 30 times 30 plus negative 2 times negative 4. This is negative. This is 80. 30 times 30, what do you get? So here I get four seventy. The lower, the one down, negative. The one down is negative two times thirteen. Plus negative three times negative four. The one down. So this is negative twenty six plus one twenty. Get ninety four. So after getting 94, then we say negative 94 y, just multiply the up the numbers up and the ones down. This one gives us So your y was negative five. Now I've seen people who told me it was x was negative five. I think they made a mistake in their letters here. And I told you how to be careful the letters. Then here, negative 94 x is equal to 94. So x is 94. So x is negative one and y is negative five. Those, I had people telling me those answers, but I, I but I think some of you must have interchanged. What you called your x was your y, and what was your y was your x. I hope we have understood how we have worked out this question. Shadia, 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 are we together? Shadia, are we together? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Now there was one last question. Uh, is somebody copying the solution? Just take a picture or a screenshot. Take a screenshot. You will do it after. I want, we want to do the last number. There's one more number. By the way, what is a singular matrix? What, what do you know about a singular matrix? It's determinant of zero. Very good. For a singular matrix, Whenever they talk about singular matrix, the determinant is equal to zero. In other words, you get your matrix they have given you, find its determinant, and the determinant you get, that expression for determinant, equate it to zero. That's what we call a determinant. I mean, the matrix being singular. So there is that number that you are going to finish up with. Uh, let me just change like this a little bit. Yep. There's that number, it's part C, this one. Given that matrix P is equal to 3A, this is A, 3A, 4, 3, and A is singular. Given that matrix P is singular, find the value, if it is one figure of values, it, it might have more than one, values of A. So let us give ourselves two minutes to work it out. Well, you don't understand, please, you ask. Now you haven't gotten any answer. Okay. Hey, uh, Aliyah, 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 what's your answer? Teacher, I'm still working out. 
Okay. Okay, if, if somebody is still working out, can somebody put up a hand in that? Because I, I thought I could start on the solution, but I want to start when somebody is still working out. Apart from apart from Alia, any other person who is still working out? Okay, Alia, we are giving you two more minutes in that you finish. We need, we need to work it out together and see how the solution is going to be going. Okay, because I'm seeing the time picking up. Determinant, this one has gone off. Determinant of P, let us work it out together. How have you gotten determinant of P? Major diagonal, we get, we get the major diagonal minus the minor diagonal, which is 3A squared minus 12. But determinant of P is zero because it's singular. They told us in the question is singular. The reason is because it's singular. Therefore, we shall get this determinant 3 s squared minus 12 and we equate it to zero. So we have that question. I mean, we have that stage. From that stage, how have you gotten the answers? Do you have one answer for A or you have two answers for A? Who can answer that question? Do you have one answer for A or you have two? Somebody reply. If you have got an answer, you reply in that you make the life, the class lively. I've got one answer. Tell me I have one answer. Oh, I have one answer, but I see. And it's two. And it's two. Yes. But I'm seeing A is squared. When A is squared, don't you remember that squared squared uh, letters give us two? Because a square is for two. Two answers. Because it's a quadratic. Remember the quadratic, quadratic equations? Eh? Quadratic equations give us two. Quadratic. P squared, X squared. Every time you find a square, we expect two answers. Maybe if they are repeated roots, they are repeated answers, but a square means two answers. So where is your other answer? Okay, I've noticed, I think I've known where you have not done the right thing. How have you gotten that answer that you have said? How did you get that answer? We solve the equation and then it equated to two. Because the first hey, divided, we transfer the 12 to the other side, then we divide hey, it by three, then yeah. like this, like this, eh? Ah. Then you divided it. Yes. And then you got four. Then you found a square. Yeah, which has two. Okay. Now I've seen. Now when you are solving a number that has a, a square, a quadratic square, in this situation, we shall, the answer might be similar to what we are going to get, but this is the way we solve such numbers. From today onwards, you don't take this the other side unless you have seen something. But what you do, make sure you learn this part I'm going to do, is three. Is three common to 12? Is three a common factor to 12? Yes. Yes. Is three part of the factors of 12? No, no, no. Do you think I can do like this? I can factorize out three and I put S squared. What will I put here? Oh, four. Four. So we have something like this. So A, now what do you notice? If I divide both sides by three, that three will cancel. So it is going to be zero. Okay, what I've done is this. 
if I divide by three, divide by three, s squared minus four is equal to zero. Now, in that number, eh? Have you learned, did you learn, did you learn difference of two squares? Have you ever learned difference of two squares? Yes, teacher. Do you, do, you, do you observe any difference of two squares here? You notice, I can have a minus two and a plus two. You agree with that? Yes. You agree? Yes. So from here, we shall say, do agree. Shall say either a minus two is equal to zero or a plus two is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So this will give us a is equal to two or a is equal to negative two. That's how we solve such a question. So we expect two answers. One is positive two and the other one is negative two. And even if, okay, for the other, the way we had done your first part, eh, the other method of first taking that of the other side, it could also give you the answer, so that for you, when you reach the other part, you did, well, when you're finding the square root, you didn't get the actual answers to square root. I can ask you from this thing. What are the, what's the answer for this one? If I give you a number like this. Negative uh, plus two or minus two. Plus or minus two. So, so even if you are done using the other method, eh, still could have come to the answer that you want. Plus or negative two. Okay, then. But now, but, but this one, eh, I think I need to show you some number here. Something small here. If I if I give you a question like this, if I say p squared is equal to p squared minus minus three p is equal to zero. If I give you a number like this, just check for me this one. What would be the answers for such a number? P squared minus three p is equal to zero. When you come across a question like that. What do you do? Everybody work it out for me and see, show me the answers. This one. I have a feeling we are, we are okay with that singular thing that we don't have done. You work out for me this number. Very simple number, it comes like as number one. Number one, so how do you get the answer? You, get, you just use one minute. Eh? There's something I want to show you that you should always follow when you're doing such numbers. Just one minute, you work it out.
What answer have you got? I'm just checking something small to see how you are solving it out. What answer have you got for P? Find P. Hey, you have not worked it out. No, you have not. Aliyah, what's your what's answer for P? Teacher, I don't know. Hey, you have not worked out. It's just the normal question. I was, there's something I want to test. Sarah, what's your answer? I'm still working out. <laughs> I think you have not understood. Okay. Well, that number is a very short number. Martina, do you have any answer for that P? Time start. You have what? Time Shall start. we ask Doug? Okay. Maybe let's work it out. This is what I wanted you to know how they work out such questions. It's the same thing I was trying to do here. You see this part here, this method of first factorizing out a figure. When I give you a number like this, let me show you that one way of, of working it out, but it's not the right way. Somebody can just say, P squared is 3P. Do you notice that? I've got the answer is 3 and negative 3. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, negative 3. OK, let us check and see. Somebody can do like this. That person can say, okay, I divide by P, I divide by P, one P goes, and the answer is three. That is one way. But now what I wanted to show you, such a, such a working is not right because we expect two answers of P because of the square, yeah. two answers for P. But when you just take your three P on the other side, it will only give you one answer for P. So the correct way of working it out is the same way we have done here. You always first check if, if there is a common factor, you factorize out the common factor. That's the right way of working it out. So common factor is P. There is a P here, there is another P. Hmm? So I can put P out. When I put P out, I remain with this. Do you notice that expression? Do you agree with that expression? Yes. Hmm? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. that expression, eh? You know, when you have two things, for example, here, we have two brackets. When you have two brackets and their product is zero, eh, their answer is zero, you, you say either the first one is equal to zero or the second is equal to zero. In other words, if two things are multiplied and their answer is equal to zero, then pick one of them one by one and say either this first one you get is equal to zero or the second one is equal to zero. So here, when I have something like this, I have a P outside, I have a bracket, this one, but I'm saying they are equal to zero. So what am I going to do now? How will I get the answers for P? I'll say either this first one, this one, eh? either P is equal to zero, this one, eh? or the bracket P minus three is equal to zero. Have you seen what I'm doing? If you have two things and you're multiplying them eh? and their answer is zero on the other side, pick one by one and equate to zero. If it was in form of a bracket, pick the whole bracket. If it is only like a letter, pick that letter and equate to zero. So when I do like this, you know that this P is equal to zero, or P is equal to three, that will be the answer, the, the answers for the P. Are my people understanding what I'm doing? Yes, teacher. Have you noticed the difference between just dividing, just taking on the other side and first factorizing? This is a very common question. It comes so common in section A. And where people make mistakes, they just rush to, to take on the other side. Eh? Uh -uh. Whenever you see a square, just know a square requires two answers. If it is a cube, Q 
cube is for uh, senior five. All level, normally I don't put cubes. But, but the power indicates the number of uh, solutions, the number of answers we are expecting to get. Are we together, people? Yes. Isabel, are we together? Yes. Okay, I, I think today's lesson, uh, we can call it a day from that stage. And I think if your class is small, the class becomes manageable. Uh, uh, we, shall, we shall block out. If people don't, don't get admitted by Sunday, uh, I think we shall not allow people to come into the class. We want, we want, what I've noticed, we want a manageable class. During the other time of, of, of uh, 